You know, I walked in the, the door today, you know, a little bit tired. Right. You know, well, I don't want to get up here and hoop and holler, and you know, I just wasn't really feeling it. But man, something about when you come into God's house, something about it. Something about the atmosphere, you know, you don't experience this anywhere else. You you don't get that feeling, the feeling that you're you're safe, that God is just literally wrapping his arms around you. That you are absolutely, no doubt about it, in the presence of God. Someone that could give you victory in a losing situation. In circumstances that you cannot face alone. That he somehow works it, works it out where you see the better end of it. It's awesome. I'm going to turn to John 21 and 3. And I'll give you all a little bit to get there. I'm sure once we go through this, y'all can kind of guess my, my title and my drift here, what I'm trying to go through tonight. And I don't know the delivery of it. I'll be honest. I don't know what's going to happen. Came here tonight, kind of, I, I had a feeling it was going to be a small crowd, and of course, I saw some texts, got some texts that people weren't going to be here. We know where everybody is. But, I came into this service wanting to kind of leave the choice up to you to know. You know, God gives us the choice every day. How do we respond to this? How do you act to that? Same thing every day. I'm going to stick with it. The choice is yours tonight. This message is, hang on, this. How you want to respond is your choice. If you want to come to the altar, you can come to the altar anytime you want. As soon as God tells you you need to go, you need to move, move. Don't let the pew constrain you to one spot. Don't let the people that are around you change how you respond. Keep your head down. Focus on what God's trying to tell you tonight. Here we are, John 21, 3. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. Them means the disciples that he's with. I go a fishing. They say, they said unto them, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to, to draw it for the multitudes of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with the fishes. As soon as soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Tonight my message title is going to be Keep Casting Your Net. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for the spirit that we get to experience every time we come into your great place, God. Lord, the people that we get to see, the smile and faces we get to see, God, the the miracles that you're working that we can't even see yet, God. Lord, just the the little bit of prayers that we get to see answered, Lord. We thank you and are so grateful for it, God. It is now time to hear your word, Lord, and I don't want to get in the way of it, God. Take control of it, Lord. Let you be heard tonight. Let your voice be heard. Let your message be heard, God. Show us what you're trying to tell us, God. When we can't see you, let us hear you, Lord. When we can't hear you, let us see you, God. Let us see your hands in tonight's word, Jesus. In your name, amen. You may stay seated. Keep casting your nets. Go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Never hit anybody. Never said. 
said uh, ne negative things for anybody. Really, he was just talking about the truth. And making yourself more aware. What? More aware of what he would do. That's all you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Now I want you to imagine yourselves. You're in a ship or a boat all night, casting this net and casting this net, pulling it back in, pulling it back in, casting it, and you get nothing at all. Amen. Boy, that seems all too real. <laughs> <laughs> Me, especially now in the dog days of summer, or what we're getting into the dog days of summer, if I go about an hour with nothing, I'm pretty discouraged. I'll probably leave it. <laughs> or finding something better to do. Or changing your, your uh, ruler. Yeah, I've probably already thrown everything in the kitchen sink at that point. But, you work at that part of shop, man. You know, yeah, I got everything now. <laughs> so you can get any ruler you want. Right. And then this dude comes on the shore and says, Now, this has been all night. Okay, nothing. And this dude appears on the shore and tells you, why don't you cast on that side? How would you feel? Anger. Right, exactly. Who do you think you are, old man? <laughs> I've been doing everything I possibly can. Ain't no fish. Have you cast on that side before? Or is he pointing out to you something simply new to your private eye? Maybe you haven't seen that he can't see? Exactly. Quite frankly, probably. Everybody's input is valuable. Right. Now, the Bible doesn't say that they, you know, puddled up and said, well, this dude don't know what he's talking about, whatever. No. They cast the net on the right side. And once you know they pull up, well, they don't pull up because they can't pull it up because of the amount of fish that went in the net. 153. You've been fishing all night. And before they even cast the net, they had no idea this was Jesus. So they said, hey, let's try it. But when the fish appeared or got in the net and they realized that there was a multitude of fish that they could not pull up, they knew it was Jesus. Wouldn't you think it was a miracle too if you've been fishing all night and all of a sudden, boom? And what what I want to do tonight, when I say net, I want to ref that to be referring to our worship, our prayer, our uh, altar calls, our testimonies, everything that we have. Even even go as small as our smiles throughout the day. Right. Or greeting people. Something. Share, sharing the light. You could cast that net for 40 years, maybe. And get nothing. You, you've tried to reach out to people. Oh, you, you that. Maybe. 40 years of casting just a, it's just a minute. You've reached out to everybody you possibly can. You've prayed for the people. Maybe maybe that's the problem. You're not listening to God. You know, I, I could picture them whenever uh, they did get the fish in, that they realized it was a miracle. Well, well I, it, I, I made the net. Don't I get some credit? Well, it's my boat. I took y'all out here. Where's my credit? I'm the one that pulled the fish in. Where's my credit? I put us in this spot. Let me ask you, who put the fish in the net? Right. Right. He is always the one that does the miracle. You may be praying for somebody and they might pray through, it was not you that gave them the Holy Ghost. Right. It was not you that caught that fish. You might have brought somebody to church, but God's the one that got them to church. God's the one that got his, just his spirit was enough to attract him to show up with him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Amen. But maybe you've cast that, that net for 40 years, but you've done everything right. You cast it where God told you. You listened to what he said. You, you, you used the tools that he gave you himself. You used the, the fruits of his spirit. But you don't feel like you got the reward that you deserve. God, I brought, I mean, 
I want all these souls for you. Where's my reward? Let me ask you another question. What better reward is there than hearing, well done, my good and faithful servant? Right. We spend all our lives, most of us, looking for some sort of a pat on the back. Some sort of, uh, here's your certificate, here's your sticker, here's your cookie. We need, and it is a human nature thing. We like to know when we're doing a good job. We like to, you know, be shown off a little bit. But if God... He's the one that has to be shown off. Less of us, more of him. It has to be that way. He has to be the one that gets the, gets the glory. He gives us the opportunity just to get his glory. And, you know, it's not just casting your net over and over again. That, that is perseverance. But to cast your net over and over again, knowing that you're probably not going to get anything the next time you pull that net up, that is a mindset to keep going. Amen. And y'all know I'm a sports guy, so I will relate with the sports story. So I played base, baseball and basketball in high school. I stopped playing basketball in ninth grade and just went straight baseball. One year, I forgot to wear my bands. My coach was really straight. And it was either uh, tire flips or I run cross country. And if you don't know what cross country is, it is literally running. That is it. There is nothing else. Like a 5.5K or something like that. I don't know. I had no training. Okay. So I thought. But I'll get to that. So I go over to this first cross country meet. Absolutely horrible. Worst thing I've ever done in my life. Um, there's hills. Um, there's an extremely small lake that I had to run through that I lost my shoe in. <clears throat> it was tough. And it was rough. And about five minutes in... My mind was like, all right, we're done. Let's go. Made a commitment. I had to finish. And then I, I ran state the next meet. Okay. There was, this is at Oakland, like on the horse track in the inside of it or something like that. And there's these big hills and all this. And there's one spot I remember because you're sitting there running, you know. And all of a sudden, your legs are still running, but you're not moving. You're just sitting there going like that. <laughs> and I almost did not finish that race. Everything in me wanted, wanted to quit. And that's exactly what your mind tells you. You know, dude, your legs are done. You're done. All right, there ain't no other way around. You cannot finish this. You cannot do this. You can't do that. We're done. Let's go. I finished both of them. Thank God. And like... 20 minutes or something like that. Nothing impressive. This, the one, the dude that won it ran it like 16 flat. Okay. Now, remember when I said I had no training? If I had no training, there was no way I would have been able to do that. More than likely. But the years of ba uh, baseball, the years of basketball, the conditioning that we did in off season, the conditioning that we did in off season basketball, the conditioning I got during the games, somehow gave me the lung capacity. And also a mindset to be able to complete the task at hand. Right. And we can really connect that to our walk with God. A lot of times we're, we're stuck in this situation or we're presented this situation. We're like, uh, I've never faced this in my life. This is something brand new. And we, we freak out and we start losing faith slowly by slowly. When in reality, God has trained you for any situation. No matter if it was that specific one. But there's been small little things that you went through growing up and then to whatever age you are now that has led you to be able to face that situation. And we don't see it. Because I don't see it. Maybe y'all do. And I can't give any specific examples right now. But situations you face lead up and train you to face bigger problems down the road. Right. And if we can stop letting those situations mess us up mentally, if we get a, a mind that is that is firm with the foundation of God, a foundation of that God is a conqueror, then that if I apply him to me, I can be that conqueror with him. The, this small issue is not going to threaten my eternity. I can get through this. I can persevere. I can have a mindset. We need a mindset that's not phased by 
ongoing hurricane force winds. A mindset that cannot be shaken when the ground is shaken beneath it. A mindset that will not break. A mindset that will not fold. A mindset that will not collapse. But to have all these things, the perseverance, the keep on casting the net, the mindset to keep doing it, knowing you're probably not going to pull up anything for however long it may be, you, you get to hope. You know, casting that net not that many times, I'm going to be crying, praying that I get a minnow. <laughs> Something small. And that's the same thing with our nets, our worship, our prayer. Keep worshiping, keep praying, keep reaching out, keep smiling at somebody. Eventually you're going to get a small something in that net. And that is what makes it completely worth it. Because what God can do with just a mustard seed of faith. Right. Anything. Anything. But you also have to have obedience. Listening to God. Listening to, to where He wants you to throw that net. Where He's moving you. It's not you moving Him. He's moving you and you need to listen. We've all tried to do things our own way. We all have testimonies of our old past. It ain't no secret that when we do things on our own, it don't normally work out. God makes it so much easier no matter how much tougher it seems. Knowing that you have a, a somebody to fall back on that doesn't walk away when it gets tough. Somebody that has been there thousands of years from the very beginning, knows it all, created everything, is backing you, and no matter what circumstance you face, it's pretty exciting. And just faith. Having that much faith. To, I know I keep going back to the casting nets, but does anybody really see themselves doing what they did? I'll be honest. Yeah, sure, I can say yeah and make myself feel better, but no. But you reached out for your son so long. You reached out for your daughter for so long. Are you still casting your net? Or have you let that faith die back a little bit? Or, or have you put too many holes in your own net? Too big of a size of a hole in your own net? Letting whatever you do, do might have a chance to catch slip out of it. The net doesn't go bad when it's with God. 153 fish were in that net. And they pulled it all the way to the land and not... A bit of it broke. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of fish and a lot of weight. You think you know that? <laughs> it is. You know, uh, they don't say that in the Bible. And mentioning the weight, the weight of our problems sometimes get the best of us. The weight of real life problems, the, the stresses, the, the financial issues, the, the burdens, the extra unnecessary stress that we put on ourselves. You can also accidentally fill your net up with your with that. And then then what happens? You're casting this net full of anger, hatred, jealousy, bitterness, depression, sadness, all these things, and you're casting that out instead of what God wants you to cast out. You can play a part in baptizing somebody, but Jesus is the one that's washed. Let him wash you. Don't try to do it by yourself. Who's playing on the call? You? Enjoy? Don't let this world, world ruin your net. Don't let this world ruin God's net, his sunlight. Keep reaching out. No matter how long it takes, keep reaching out. Right. Because I'm telling you, when, from personal experience, when you have somebody reaching out to you, when you have somebody that's been there for so long, that has seen you transition through so many faces, through so many moods, somebody that's seen your worst and your best, 
and they don't leave you, when they don't turn your back on you, when they love you through it all, when they care for you through it all, that's when God moves. That's when God takes something so small and turns it into something so big. He takes your worst and makes it his best. Right. And that is the purpose of it all. Letting him move when he wants to move. Not getting in the way of it. Not letting your flesh affect his will. Casting your net when God tells you to cast it. Casting where he tells you to cast it. Reaching the people he wants you to reach. Reaching the, the places that he wants you to reach. Moving where he wants you to be. Putting the fish in your net. It's all part of it. So I ask you tonight. This is up to you. You get to decide how you would respond tonight. I'm gonna make. I'm not gonna say now it's all call and we gotta get down here. No, it's up to you. How how big is your net? How many times have you cast it? Maybe you haven't cast it in a while and it's kind of broken. Let God heal it. Let God remake it. Let God remit it. Let God put those fish, the the bounty of so many people. Let God take that debt that you've been carrying around. The, the people that you're trying to reach, they've been carrying around it too. Let Him wash it away. Let him put it on his shoulders because he can carry it all. Right. It's up to us to decide tonight. Are we going to continue to cast our nets when we don't seem like we're getting anything? Let's reach God. Amen.